Hey guys, hello everyone. Welcome once again to Rasayan Academy. So we are continuing the name reaction series, and today we are going to learn 83rd name reaction, right? So there were some name reactions uh, which were remaining, which are like really really important. I want to discuss uh, five name reactions in this particular video. These are like small name reactions, but they are very very important. They have been asked repeatedly in your examination. So let's just quickly do the reaction mechanism, and let's also con uh, consider few examples, right? चलो सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल गाइज बैम्फोर्ड सीवन रियक्शन एंड शपीरो रियक्शन दीज टू आर वेरी सिमिलर रियक्शन एंड दे हैव बीन आस्ट प्रीवियसली इन योर एग्जामिनेशन सो फर्स्ट थिंग गाइज वॉट इज दिस नेम रियक्शन बैम्फोर्ड स्टीवन इट इज यूजिंग अ टोसाइल हाइड्रोजोन मॉलिक्यूल ऑल राइट इट्स यूजिंग अ टोसाइल हाइड्रोजोन मॉलिक्यूल and in the presence of a base now the base selection has to be like very selective right the base is not too strong a base like butyl lithium or uh, other alkyl lithiums base is like sodium methoxide okay so sodium methoxide is a strong base considerably as compared to oh minus but not as strong as butyl lithium right so that is why uh, there is a selectivity in the product formation also there is a selectivity in the intermediate formation depending on different solvents okay so this uh, could be a future question it could be asked in this way they could ask you what intermediate is formed in polar and non polar solvents also okay so yes uh, guys let's quickly see the mechanism and then we also see the selectivity now sodium methoxide in the presence of tosyl hydrogen what does it do guys it's going to remove this acidic proton which is present on the nitrogen and it gives you this kind of a molecule all right there is a negative charge over here what is going to happen this nitrogen is going to use the electron pair and eliminate <clears throat> and it is going to eliminate this tosyl group you are having a negative charge and a positive charge right so this is the intermediate which we are going to take to different solvents right what happens is yeah this is your intermediate guys right over here this one All right. So from this molecule, a proton has been removed, and this is your intermediate that you have got. Now, in the non-polar solvent, what happens? In the polar solvent, what happens? In the polar solvent, guys, the bond is going to open up one by one, and you will first of all get a carbonyl over here, n triple bond n positive. So you are going to get a carbonyl, right? And then what happens is. yes the carbonyl is going to gain the electron density from the medium itself right and when the bond is going to be taken away let's say you are having sodium methoxide and nuh ya fir muh for example okay so it has taken away a proton and it is n triple bond n right now okay in this way now the nitrogen is going to eliminate and you will get a positive charge over here so let's say you are going to get this kind of a positive charge what happens next next a uh, proton will be lost from the medium now there are two protons right which can be lost one is in between right on this carbon this proton the other proton is on this methyl okay but since the base is selective less reactive more selective methoxide base second thing is you are having a polar solvent so there is no hurry the proton can loss uh, can be lost easily and you are going to get the sades of alkene right so in the bamford reaction you mostly get the sades of alkene as long as there is a possibility okay if there is no possibility then we cannot say but as long as there is a possibility you will get the sades of alkene right now this is the e uh, z alkene you are also going to get the e alkene as well that is you are going to get the trans alkene as well now this is the mechanism in the polar solvent you are going to get the carbonyl and carbocation right carbocation what happens in the non polar solvent like ccl4 like ch2cl2 what happens in these situation let's see quickly so this was your intermediate negative charge now in the presence of uh, in the presence of a solvent it's a non polar solvent all right what happens is see the nitrogen bond this negative charge falls over here one of the bond opens up you are having something like this <clears throat> there is a negative charge what will happen now nitrogen will eliminate as it is and you are going to get a carbene 
okay so this is your uh, negative charge and you are going to get a carbene now over here on this carbon now what happens is carbene is going to undergo a uh, hydrogen this bond migration right so this bond migrates and attacks on the carbene carbene has a negative charge and that is why the carbene is going to now take away the proton so this bond is going to migrate on the carbene and this is the same product that you are getting okay you are going to get both the e and this d alkene no problem in that the mechanism in the non polar solvent will have the carbene formation and in the polar solvent it's going to have the uh, carbonyl and carbocation formation okay so the product is the same you're going to get the same product all right right over here this one right there's one one carbon less over here so this is the major product this one this is the major product that you're getting okay yes right over here this proton is going to be removed not this one so the product is also the same in both the condition just it is going through a different intermediate just that okay now thermal bamford stevens reaction let's take an example over here now this reaction does not have any reagent as you see it is toluene which is a non polar solvent and steel tube 65% of product you are getting okay very fine but only heat and nothing else so what happens in such a situation can you uh, have the carbocation formation no so what will happen guys this way let's say this bond is going to open up this bond opens up over here and you are getting the electron density like this me3si and you can just try the mechanism out by yourself also okay negative charge on this carbon and double bond n and uh, this bond has opened up since so you are going to get the styrene molecule what will happen now yes what will happen now the electron density on this nitrogen is going to fall over here okay yeah there is a negative charge already <clears throat> and basically the nitrogen is going to take away right so you are absolutely in this molecule wherever you move the arrows you are just going to get the carbene okay that is what you have to focus on right because you can have the styrene elimination you are going to have the nitrogen elimination after that you are only going to be left out with the carbene also you don't have carbonyl or carbocation formation so that is why only a ch rearrangement is going to give you the product basically this is your product okay the double bond is right over here okay this proton is going to be uh, rearranged to give you this carbene no aqueous work up nothing you are having only heat so that's going to give you major trans product and minor cis product right styrene elimination and nitrogen elimination gives you a carbene over here followed by the uh, hydrogen shift right this is just your one two hydrogen shift just like you do the same in the ch bond insertion okay but it is on the adjacent carbon so we call it the shift okay this is how you are going to get the product now bamford reaction always give you the more stable product it is uh, having the less strong base that is why shapiro reaction is very similar you are once again having the uh, tosyl hydrazone everything is the same but you are using two moles of butyl lithium first of all butyl lithium is a very strong base it is a very strong base so it is always always going to give you the less uh, substituted alkene okay in this case we only have one possibility what happens is let's quickly see the mechanism let's say this proton is removed and this proton is removed from here so guys if this proton is removed by butyl lithium then the bonds are going to fall up like this and the tosyl group is going to get eliminated so we must write the product or the intermediate in this way yes n double bond n and uh, yes the tosyl is eliminated this proton is also eliminated you are only having a minus charge right the minus charge falls over nitrogen you are going to have a carba anion on the doubly bonded carbon you are having a carba anion over here now in the next step there is going to be aqueous work up and that is why you are going to get the al uh, alkene okay this aqueous work up is uh, going to provide a proton over here now once again are you only going to get the z alkene absolutely not you are going to get both the alkenes both the e and the z alkene mixture is going to form always okay yes 
Now look at this example, guys. Here you see the selectivity. Here you see the selectivity of the reaction. You are having a tosyl hydrazone, which is not symmetric. All right, here you have one methyl, here you have another. So you have one hydrogen here also and over here as well. And methyl lithium is not a very bulky base, but it is a very strong base. And strong base does not selectively pick up a proton. It can just pick up a proton which is like most readily available. So that's why it is going to pick away this proton over here and the bond can fall over in between nitrogen and the tosyl group is going to eliminate. So you are going to have this intermediate, right? Once again, the bond is going to fall over and you get major product, this one. Hoffman alkene is your major product. All right? The Hoffman alkene is the major product. And if you want to remove this proton, right? If you want to remove this proton, although guys, it is giving you a more stable product. This is the tri-substituted alkene, more stable. But since we are using a strong base, it will readily try to pick up a proton. Hence, the Hoffman alkene is the major product in the Shapiro reaction. Okay. So Bamford reaction and Shapiro reaction, they are uh, complementary to each other right because of the selection of base that it is having okay absolutely guys let's now talk about another important reaction so we have seen a lot of this reaction in the uh, csi net previous year question that's why we have to discuss it over here simon smith reaction is nothing but the cy cyclopropanation of olefins using ch2i2 and ring copper couple so it is extremely simple what are we doing guys In this way, the zinc copper couple, if you are taking, what will happen is the zinc is going to insert in between the CH2 and the iodine like this. And this is going to transfer the carbene. How does it transfer the carbene to an alkene? Let's look over here. CH2, I, Zn and I over here, right? So it is going to transfer like this, okay? Now the zinc, zinc is going to take away the iodide. You are finally having the stereospecific reaction. It is always uh, cyclopropanation. In this way is always a stereospecific reaction. Plus you are having zinc iodide. What is stereospecific guys? That you are always going to do a concerted mechanism over here. Always a concerted mechanism. Why? Because it is a metal carbonoid kind of a system which will behave as a singlet carbene. Okay, so that's why you are always going to get a concerted reaction. The reaction is not difficult. The applications are very, very important. What are the different applications which have been asked in CSI and take them? First of all, let's say if you are having, if you are having an OH over here, for example, and let's say it is having two other carbons, right? So what is going to be the selectivity? All right, that is the question. Where are you going to transfer the, uh, we are going to transfer the methylene group. Okay, that is very, very important. So let's say if the OH is above the plane, for example, it is above, then the zinc is uh, going to transfer the methylene group above the plane only. That is CH2I2. It is like this. Okay, so cyclopropanation is going to take place on the same side as the allylic or homoallylic alcohol. Very, very important. Allylic or homoallylic alcohol. Both of them are going to work the same way to transfer the OH on the same side. Absolutely important. Okay, now just uh, one more important thing guys. OH is one of the directing group. Can you have any more directing group? OH is actually uh, less bulky and more directing, right? But you can have more directing groups like this. See, we are having protected amine, but the protected amine is still directing the cyclopropanation on the same side as the nitrogen. If it was above the plane, it is driving the cyclopropanation on the same side as you can see. And that's why the amine, even though it is protected and bulky, is also driving the reaction uh, in this uh, format, right? So which are the other group which can drive the reaction? Methoxy can drive the same reaction. Although the property of oxygen is a little bit less. So if you are taking acetate, I cannot guarantee major product will be on the same side because acetate is bulky also, right? But OH, methoxy and amine, all of these groups are doing the directing reaction on the same side, okay? Now, there is one more type of que question which has been asked in the previous years based on the Simon Smith reaction. Let's say you are having a molecule like this 
and you are having CH two I two. Now this qu uh, question is asked in combination with the Korachikovsky reaction. That is, if you are having if you are having the CH two I two along with the zinc copper couple, then where are you going to do the cyclopropanation on this alkene or on the carbonyl or on this alkene? Absolutely, this requires more electron-rich alkene. So you are going to do the cyclopropanation right over here, not over here, not over here. This is your major product. Why is that so? Because if you want to do cyclopropanation on this system, you require a nucleophilic attack, which is only possible from a elide. This is not an elide, right? It is a carbene, and carbenes are supposed to be electron deficient. Okay. This uh, zinc copper couple generates the carbene. So if you want to write it like this, like we usually write, then also it is correct. Zinc iodide like this. If you want to write it like this, then also it's okay. Or if you want to write it like this, CH2 double bond zinc, then also it is okay. It is not wrong. So it is like a metal carbene which is electron deficient, so requires more electron rich bond to. Do the cyclopropanation. All right, very very important. Has been asked plenty of time. Now let's move onwards. 86 name reaction that is Pavarotti rearrangement, guys. Again, very very important. And I don't know how have I skipped this, but it is extremely important. <laughs> okay, we have done plenty of other carbonyl reactions too, but this was uh, remaining. So what is Pavarotti reaction, guys? Transformation of enolizable alpha haloketone to ester. Carboxylic acid, amide, alkoxide, hydroxide, or amine catalyzed rearrangement, respectively. So you can have ester, acid, amide based on what is the nucleophile that is taken. Let's say I am having this kind of a acyl chloride molecule, and it is a enolizable alpha haloketone. So this is alpha halogen and ketone over here. So in the presence of alkoxide like this, in the presence of alkoxide like this, what are we going to? do how is the reaction mechanism going to proceed first of all the proton on the other side on the other alpha halogen obviously this proton is supposed to be more acidic right but still we are going to remove this proton why because then only the reaction is going to proceed right otherwise if you just remove this proton it's just going to give you a enolate reaction won't proceed right so form the enolate from this side let's say this is a carbanion that we are talking about so form the enolate from this side if you want to draw an enolate that's also fine but i used to uh, i just uh, write the pref uh, prefer to write it uh, simply like this because this is the original thing that is happening carbanion attacking on this position to give you a cyclopropanone intermediate right Now the cyclopropanone intermediate, depending on whichever nucleophile you have, you have uh, uh, alkoxide, you will get the ester. If you have hydroxide, you are going to get the acid. If you have amine, you are going to get the amide. Let's see how it is going to directly attack over this carbonyl bond, opens up, falls back, and one of the sides, since it is a symmetric molecule, so doesn't matter wherever it is opening. Now you are going to get a six-membered ring. All right, carbon anion on one side, let's say, and the other carbon is going to have the ester group. What will happen with the carbon anion? This carbon anion is going to uh, undergo aqueous workup, and it is going to take away a proton. So your final product is going to be CO2R like this. All right. So what just happened from the alpha haloketone? You have got the ester of a smaller ring type. The rearrangement is going to be Uh, basically bond opening now sometimes it could be ring contraction sometimes it could be uh, ring expansion sometimes it's uh, on a simple aliphatic molecule let's uh, check an example over here what's happening so guys it's not always necessary that you will uh, that in the exam the alpha haloketone is given to you sometimes you might have to form it also okay so this is an example like that this is your uh, beta keto ester molecule it is a simple beta keto ester molecule which is provided to you all right and you are given bromine okay so what is this bromine going to do it is first of all going to do alpha halogenation alpha halogenation and where alpha halogenation first of all will take place on the most acidic proton this is the most acidic proton alpha and this is the next acidic proton alpha so both places the alpha halogenation has taken place All right. Now you are doing this, uh, uh, adding this base over here. 
to get the reaction all right so how does it happen guys this side you don't have a proton you only have a proton this side okay so try to do the mechanism by yourself only one side a proton is present we are minus eliminate you are going to have a cyclopropanone intermediate in such a way that one side is the ester already the other side is this bromine this bromine is still existing okay it has not eliminated now what happens is the methoxide can still open up a carbonyl bond where does it open up guys let's say if it opens up on this side there is no benefit of it because the br minus won't remove if it opens on this side let's say what happens you are getting a five membered ring co2me bromine and this is or you are having a negative charge so negative charge falls over this carbon so that the br minus eliminates so in such a scenario you are going to have a five member member ring with a double bond one ester on this side co2me and the other ester has formed over here co2me on this side okay so this is the major product of uh, fiversky rearrangement from this molecule okay so it can uh, simultaneously lead to elimination also right which we have seen in this example all right now moving onwards <clears throat> Moving onwards to 87th uh, name reaction, and Easter reaction. So, guys, Wolf rearrangement and Easter reaction. These are also extremely, extremely important, right? And these are little reactions which we are uh, we have to complete, right? Chalo, let's uh, quickly revise this. I know because most of you have uh, done this reaction already. I hope so. One carbon homologation of carboxylic acid using di azomethane, and you know, in the exam, many a times this exact this question has been asked, and we are not able to identify it, right? So yes, this reaction easy hai, but don't underestimate, right? So we have to do this also. One carbon homologation. Homologation means one step up reaction we are doing. Okay, homologation is adding one more CH2 in the same molecule. So you are starting with this carboxylic acid. If you see, and you end up with this carboxylic acid, one methylene group is added extra over here. If you notice, yes. So what is the overall mechanism that is going on? You are first of all having an acid which we can just convert to a sal chloride by SOCl2 or by PCl5 or COCl whole twice. Anyway, we are just going to convert this to the sal chloride, right? Okay. Now we take the sal chloride and with the use of diazomethane CH2N2 CH2N2 guys CH2 is negative N2 is positive so this is how the attack takes place Cl minus eliminates you are having the acyl diazonium like this now the negative charge has been removed on CH2 nitrogen is still positive so nitrogen wants to eliminate but before that what will happen another molecule of diazomethane is going to grab a proton from here all right it's going to just grab a proton from here it's going to look like this n2 positive and there is a negative charge over here right now the nitrogen can eliminate and you are going to have the acyl carbene yes you are having the acyl carbene intermediate now what will this acyl carbene do there are plenty of things that the acyl carbene can do but it is going to undergo rearrangement let's write it over here this step is known as the wolf rearrangement reaction guys it is uh, one of the steps of the and ester synthesis okay so look at this this is the major rearrangement step all right so there was already one hydrogen so this is rch double bond c double bond o to give you a ketene molecule all right now how does this ketene open up if you are having water in the presence of silver and water if you are having in the presence of light you are just going to have water attack over here all right and this bond is going to open up it's a weaker pi bond so it opens up to give you rch2 i'm directly writing it's going to definitely take away a proton but i'm directly writing so this is your overall mechanism okay so and ester reaction one carbon homologation in the presence of ch2n2 and this step is the wolf rearrangement 
reacting. All right, the rearrangement of the acyl carbene. This one, it is the Wolff rearrangement reactant. Very very important. Okay, let's uh, quickly see an example of this, guys. So first of all, yes. See what do you have over here? The rest of the molecule, you don't have to worry about the rest. All of the, uh, you know, there are so many reagents in this uh, question. That is why it is scary. But it is so important that you realize each step. LiOH methane, all this is just using, just doing the ester hydrolysis. Okay. So this ester is first of all going to hydrolyze into COOH. In the next step, C double bond O. What is this molecule? Guys? C double bond O, OEP, and Cl. The molecule is like this. Okay. So what is it going to do? It is going to make this one, this OH a good leaving group, isn't it? First of all, the ester is hydrolyzed, and then we are going to make the OH a good leaving group. Yeah, rest of the molecule is as it is. O T uh, T B D P S. This part is as it is, so we don't need to be worried about it. It is going to make this a good leaving group OH. How? Like this. OET. Okay? Something like this, right? Because it's a good leaving group, Cl is going to eliminate from over here, right? Now, what happens is this oxygen has become a good leaving group CH2N2. CH2 minus is going to attack over this carbonyl. Um, all right, just a second. CO2, ha. Huh? Yes, and the oxygen group, this whole group eliminates. Okay? The ortho uh, ethyl carbonate group eliminates. It's known as ethyl carbonate, isn't it? Yes. Rest of the molecule as it is, TBDPS. This is once again your acyl group, CH2N2. Positive. Exactly the same thing that from here you can just easily assume we are having the same and Eastert reaction. All right, the same mechanism is going to be followed. One of the protons taken away from here, carbene formation, rearrangement of carbene, wolf rearrangement, and then water attack. See, and then water attack finally to give you this molecule. So the final product I'm writing over here, since you have identified all of these steps, Okay, this is going to be the uh, yes, one more CH2 added over here. Just a second, yes, one more CH2 added over here and acid. Okay, right, so this is your final answer, guys. And there could be OH also, but let's see if we have water. We don't have water, guys. We have methane also. I suspect that this is going to be OME. Okay, because we have got one ester over here. I think that it is converting the whole ester into a, a homologous ester like this. Okay, we don't have water. We have methane also. We should have the uh, ester once again, right? So one carbon is added in between this carbon and the ester group. Homologation reaction and ester reaction involving Wolff rearrangement. Okay. So we have done five very important name reactions. We have quickly done this because these name reactions are very simple. We have considered one one example each. And uh, when you solve the practice questions of CSI net, you will see that all of these questions have been asked in your examination. Okay. Right, guys. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in another such video. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do and please share with your friends also. Also like the video. Also comment what you want next from me. And uh, bye, everyone. I'll see you. Bye, guys.